Okay, eukaryotic microbes, the helminths. Okay, adult helminths are usually going to be large enough that you can see them with the naked eye. Um, some are free living, but others are pathogenic. Um, they can be parasitic um, and they spend some part of their lives inside the gastrointestinal tract of an animal host, inside an intestine somewhere. Um, you can basically split them into two major groups and I call them the worms, okay? So you've got the flatworms like this. They kind of look like a ribbon um, in the fact that they're, like the name describes, fairly flat. Um, they're thin, they're, they've can't, um, they have segmented bodies and they include cestodes, which are tapeworms, and trematodes, which are flukes. Um, the phylum for these is platyhelminthes, okay? Now, the roundworms. Roundworms, they're circular. They're not flat like a ribbon, okay? Um, the phylum is Ascalmenthes instead of platyhelminthes. They are elongated. They're cylindrical. Um, usually their body is unsegmented, and they can also be called nematodes. All right. So helminths are multicellular animals. They have organs, they have organ systems. Most developed organs are going to be the reproductive tract. Um, why? Perpetuating the life cycle. Um, if a species wants to live, they have to make babies. So if we're talking about the simplest organisms, what's gonna be their most important organ system? Reproductive system, so they can spread. Um, life cycle for all helminths include a fertilized egg, larval stage, and an adult stage. So the egg or the larva is the infective form, okay? It's passed from one host to another. The host in which the larva develops is called the intermediate host. The host in which the adult lives is called the definitive host. Some helminths have sexes that are separate. Some are basically two sexes in one organism. So male and female are in the same organism. Cestodes generally are hermaphroditic. They're both sexes in one organism. Um, trematodes can be hermaphroditic or they can have sexes that are separate. It kind of depends on the particular organism, which is which. Nematodes, they're always going to have sexes that are separate and normally females are going to be larger than males. So let's talk about the pinworm. Okay, so Enterobius um, vermicularis. Okay, so microscopic eggs are going to be swallowed by the host. Kids always have their hands in their mouth. Okay, the eggs can come from self-infection if you already have them and you scratch and you put your fingers in your mouth. Um, another infected person or um, from a contaminated object, okay? The eggs hatch in the intestine of the new host, okay? Larvae will mature into adults um, within about a month, and the adults mate, and the female migrates to the anus of the infected individual and deposits eggs. The eggs are itchy, so, kids tend to scratch, okay? So scratching contaminates their hands. Now, they're playing with another kid and they're touching blocks and things and the kid touches blocks and things. Then the kid puts his hand in his mouth. It's spreading, okay? So pinworm is one of those things that you see um, in kids because they don't wash their hands and if their butt is itching, they tend to scratch and then not wash their hands and they don't necessarily tell you because they don't necessarily have the vocabulary to be able to say, hey, mom, okay? This is where parents watch their kids and go, why are you scratching your butt so much? Kids, this is a lot more common in kids because like I said, they don't have the, I guess, social niceties not to scratch their butt and not wash their hands. 
and they tend to put their hands in their mouth quite a bit more often, I think, than adults do. Okay, so um, examples of helminths and their modes of transition. So nematodes, um, intestinal nematodes, uh, you've got kind of examples as far as infected egg stage, the enterobius um, vermicularis, the larval stage, this is trichinella sp um, spirillus, um, <clears throat> the disease or the worm. You've got Ascaris, you've got pinworm, you've got um, trichina worm, life cycle requirements for um, entero enterobius vermicularis, it's humans, for trichinellus um, spiralis, you've got pigs and wild mammals, um, tissue nematodes, nematodes, sorry. Hmm. Um, you've got river blindness and the guinea worm going from humans to black flies, humans to cyclops, which not mythical cyclops. This is actually an aquatic invertebrate. So how is it spread? Ingestion, fecal pollution um, of the soil with eggs, close contact as far as pinworm goes, consumption of meat, um, containing larva, burring, burrowing of larva into the tissues, fly bite, ingestion of water containing the cyclops that we talked about. So for the flatworms, um, Tania solinium is one of the cestodes. It's a tapeworm, okay? So it can be found in humans and swine, which is one of the reasons why it's called pork tapeworm. Um, eating undercooked pork, if you look at both of these, undercooked or raw, except one's fish and one's pork, one of the reasons we cook our food is to try and get rid of these things. Um, there was one of those episodes of the monsters inside of me where a woman had a, about a softball-sized bundle of worms in her intestine that had created a hole. And when they kind of traced back, they figured out that she had had sushi on a dock where they had caught it that day and made it into sushi automatically and she ate it. Now I'm not saying sushi is bad, don't ever eat, no. But it is a lot safer for them to freeze that fish, kill whatever's in it, and then eat that as opposed to risking getting worms by eating something directly out of the water. Okay, so get acquainted with some of these pathogenic helminths. We'll be discussing them later in the semester. Now let's talk malaria. Malaria is one of the biggest infectious diseases, disease issues worldwide. It affects an estimated 250 million people worldwide annually. Approximately 1 million children under the age of five die from malaria each year this is worldwide. Malaria is caused by a eukaryotic pathogen, um, specifically plasmodium. Okay, so um, it's a protozoan. It's spread through the bite of a mosquito that is geographically limited to tropical areas. So we talk about it particularly in sub-Saharan Africa because it's tropical there. Symptoms include joint and muscle aches, headaches, malaise, which means that you are super tired all the time. You feel like you're just drained of energy. Um, fever and chills. If it goes untreated, it can cause death, okay? Treatment has traditionally been um, quinine. But just like with antibiotic resistance, um, we've got some resistance issues coming up, or we've had some resistance issues rearing their heads. Um, artisanate is emerging as a more common treatment now because quinine isn't as effective as it once was. So prevention of the disease, how do we prevent it from happening? Um, it includes measurements to basically limit contact with the skin and mosquitoes. So one, keep your skin covered, wear long sleeves, wear pants. Two, when you sleep, use mosquito nets so that they can't get to you when you're asleep. Um, three, Stay indoors at peak hours. So usually sunrise, sunset, 
time frames are when the mosquitoes are the most prominent. So don't go out during that time frame. As well, and I'm sure everybody probably knows this already, but use bug repellent like off that has DEET in it. Okay. All right, so with malaria, we've got kind of two different things working here. An infected mosquito uh, feeds off of an infected host and <clears throat> it ingests the gametocytes, okay? So the male and female gametocytes. Um, they actually go into uh, maturity inside the female. And as they mature, they make these oocysts that release the sporozytes. When they bite a human, it gets put into the human. And again, it goes through the life cycle inside the human. And if this human is still walking around and mosquitoes are still biting them, you're reinfecting mosquitoes that can go and bite somebody new. So you've got kind of two hosts here, okay? We've got the human who gets infected by the mosquito and the mosquito who gets infected by the human. But <clears throat> either way, you're getting basically kind of the larval stage, which is going to be the interim host, and the adult stage, which is going to be the definitive host. And that's the end of chapter four. If I can get my mouse to work.